Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale radio controlled Armortech early production German Tiger 1. Since the last video update a lot of progress has been made to the model's top deck mount as well as the rear fan and engine compartment layout. We'll be going over all of these features and details in this video. Just prior to getting working on the fabrication of the fan compartment areas. One area that needs to be focused on is that of the actual bulkheads that we have here that support the top deck. Now on this version of the Armor Tech kit, the kit supplies you with these two aluminum cross member bulkheads which are for the front and rear portions of the vehicle. Now these are a somewhat new inclusion to the Armor Tech kit. They've had, the Armor Tech kits have had these now for about five or six years now. If we recall from the last Tiger One build that I did, in which I was a first generation Tiger One, these pieces here were not present and in fact had to be procured as an aftermarket supplier from the company Panzer Technic. With the Armor Tech creating these pieces now and releasing them with the general release kit, the Panzer Technic ones are definitely something that's passe and is no longer necessary. These pieces here are very similar in specs to the Panzer Technic ones. As you can see, they both act as a actual rigidity rib that keeps the top deck nice and straight, prevents it from bending with the weight of the turret and the other deck fittings. And here's the rear bulkhead just prior to it going into primer. Now since the last scene I went ahead and made some modifications to the stock piece as I'm diverting from the kit design. The way the kit is designed is that this bulkhead here it gets bolted to the rear engine deck of the model and gives it support. The piece is supposed to be connected permanently to the engine deck and would lift off with the top deck. Now for this model here I went ahead and changed the design layout and the design I changed was the way it fastens to the vehicle. Rather than having a mount directly to the upper deck I changed it so it mounts permanently to the sides of the hull. To do this I went ahead and used two Armortech steel brackets that I had on hand on either side. These have been permanently bolted to the piece, as you can see. And on the tank, there are actually two, four matching holes that are countersunk into the plate that are going to secure this permanently in place. Now, in addition to doing the modification for this, I also went ahead and modified the top portion here. Like I said before, this was originally designed to be bolted and sandwiched to the top deck and the engine grills. Rather than going with that route, I had to go ahead and modify the holes with, by making them larger. By making the holes larger, when the fasteners get bolted to the engine deck, which hold on the cooling grills, they will simply drop directly in place and make no contact with the bulkhead that you see here. Thus allowing for the top deck to be easily taken on and off without being connected to the bulkhead which will be mounted permanently inside the hull. At this point here the bulkhead will go and get its coat of primer to which then will be installed to the vehicle. And here are the bulkheads now mounted to the model. Like I said before on this build here they're going to be fastened permanently to the hull of the model and the top deck will simply just sit directly on top of the bulkhead spans. As for the installation of the bulkhead, like I said before, this is facilitated by two fasteners which are going to be mounted on the side portion here of the hull plate. Now these holes were added by myself and are not part of the kit. In addition to drilling out the two locations, I also made countersunk bores into the aluminum plate to allow the fasteners to be held in a sunken state to which will make it easier for me to blend everything over without the bodywork. Of course this will follow in future videos. Now when it comes time to drilling out the plate, like I said in the last video with the rear panel, the aluminum is fairly thick on the side here, so drilling out the wells is a issue that's not really too difficult to drill through. However, one thing is important to keep in mind, specifically if you're using a new, brand new sharp bit, is that you can easily drill all the way through the material, which will again lead to some headaches. It's important to properly mark off the point on the drill bit in which you're going to drill the depth of the piece. The piece is sunk in approximately an eighth of an inch, a little less than a quarter of an inch, in order for the fasteners to be completely sunk in. In addition to the bulkheads, I also went ahead and at this time the build installed the little straps which are utilized to hold the deck up and 
if following the kit as for the instructions, this is where the kit top deck would be permanently fastened to the lower hull. Now, this is not going to be utilized on this build with that type of design, in which I'll be utilizing a different type of locking mechanism so that the top deck is removable. However, this is going to be done fastenerless. Regardless of that type of system, the kit straps are still installed anyway, as they also act as a backbone to help hold up the deck once it comes time to do the other mounting hardware procedure. As for how many of these little tabs are installed, this is as per the kit, in which there are six along the sides, three on each side, two along the front glass's plate, and another two on the rear. Now, on the two in the back over here, they will be modified further compared to the stock original. However, this will be discussed in an upcoming video. Now, as for the top deck, the top deck on this build, like I may have mentioned in the original unboxing portion of this video, is different compared to the first and second generation of Armor Tech Tiger 1s, namely the ones from 02 and also from 05. The difference being that those vehicles utilize a single steel rectangular plate that is used for that of the top deck. When Armor Tech moved away from the steel in favor of aluminum alloy plates, they also redesigned the way the top deck is formatted. Rather than the one single piece, the top deck are now comprised of two pieces of laser cut aluminum. This is also seen on the late production Tiger 1 build that I did a number of years ago. With the piece, with the plate being two pieces, you do get the more accurate sunk in type effect of that of the engine deck and compared to the front half, which is more representative that of the real tank. Just laying the pieces down, you get a good idea on how they will sit when it comes time for the actual installation. Here on the engine deck, you can see the inset now more visible. Now, this inset here will not necessarily be as visible once the installation of the components get fitted, namely that of the grill work as well as the engine hatch. Once all these pieces get fitted, they're going to have their correct type appearance. Now this differs again from the earlier pattern of Armor Tech Tiger 1s in which this was one solid steel plate and another steel plate would be bolted to the underside of this here in order for the engine hatch to properly lock in. That is no longer necessary with this current design. With the bulkheads now installed as well as the deck now being able to be temporary fitted to the hull, this gives me the parameters that are required in order to subdivide the rear hull area in order for the detail components that are going to be added. Now, to anyone that has watched the last Tiger 1 build that I recently completed, this will look very similar to that build in that this vehicle will also be receiving the same type of detailing that is found in the two bays over here, which on the Tiger 1 are going to be used for that of the fan the cooling fan clusters with the radiator, as well as the air intake that's located in these sections here. I currently have one of my fans ready to go. This one here will be used on this actual tank. And these ones here were prefabricated a little while ago in order to save time for this exact same purpose that I have right here. Now what does look a little different compared to the last build is the center portion that I have right here. The reason for that is that unlike the last build, which only utilized the fan compartment detailing, this vehicle here will be getting its full engine compartment detailing, complete with engine and engine compartment interior detailing. Because of that, that requires the extra work on the center portion here that I have just completed in this mock-up point. It is because of the full engine compartment detailing, which is why the batteries have to have their locations moved from the rear portion which is typically added on most 1.6 scale tanks and on this build if we notice the batteries are in the center portion of the vehicle. This is because of course once you dedicate the model to have an interior engine compartment detailing you have to lose all of this real estate over here for that of actual detail purposes. Now fortunately with a vehicle the size of the Tiger 1 this is not necessarily going to be an issue and you do have a lot of real estate to work with however free space on the inside for machinery does get gobbled up very quickly. 
So pre-planning your interior layout is definitely going to be something that is going to be needed. As for the material which is used on the engine bay dividing walls, this is the same material that I've used on my other builds, which is that of Lexan sheets. The Lexan sheets were utilized in the same similar manner with the assembly, with that of using columns that will utilize fasteners to hold everything together. In addition to the fasteners being used on the sides that we have here, there are also fasteners along the bottom leading edge. On to secure everything together, there's actually a piece of strip of angle aluminum that is bolted directly to the side of the tank. Then with these three fasteners here, they hold in this bay in this location. The column supports the rear portion here of the subdividing wall, and that is secured from the outside with a countersunk fastener. This fastener will be thoroughly deleted once the bodywork phase of the build progresses. This is a mirror image on the opposite side of the model. Now as for mounting the back portion of the walls to the rear hull, this is facilitated with this piece of plastic angle that we have here, which is secured onto the rear wall with that of bolts. Now all of the locations that bolt directly to the tank, the tank's panels have been thoroughly drilled and tapped in order for this type of mounting procedure to occur. This of course is going well outside of the kit boundaries. Now, if anyone's wondering if this is going to be a detail eyesore, the answer to that is that once all of the interior machinery and components get fitted to the model, you are not going to get visible, visible access to this section here to see the unsightly fastener. Once all the wells and everything get added, as well as the paint and the weathering, everything will, should blend directly into the model and will not be noticeable. Now, currently, like I said, the entire engine compartment is not glued at all to the tank. It is purely held on with that of fasteners. Now, the fasteners that you see here are only mounted on temporarily at this moment. The, the only portions of this assembly that are loctited in place is that of the angle strip, which is mounted directly to the tank. The reason for this has to do with the actual fabrication of what you see over here. In order to get everything to fit properly and to the right specs and size, everything has to be built inside of the model. You can't just build the pieces outside and hope for the best when it comes time for the installation. Due to the elaborate angles and cutting that needs to be done, this ha there's no other option but building it while inside of the rear of the tank. Now, because none of the pieces are held on with Loctite at the moment, now that the fabrication work is basically concluded, I could remove all the fasteners and all of the interior components that you see here will simply lift straight out of the engine bay compartment as one subassembly. With this being able to be removed at this time, this gives me the opportunity to go ahead and get the engine compartment panels in thoroughly with their coat of gray primer. This will then give me the basis for then to be reinstalled to the model in a permanent manner with that of the Loctites, as well as the other fittings that need to be added as well. And here we have the engine compartment now removed from the model. At this point here, the entire drop-in assembly is ready for its coat of primer gray. As for what has been added since the last scene, as you can see, I went ahead and added these two strips which are found on the inside portion of the engine compartment. These two rigidity seams are found on the real tank and have this little drop down portion that we have over here. The purpose for this drop down has to do with that of the mounting flange for that of the coolant tubes that connect the radiator cluster to that of the engine cooling system. More information on about that is to follow in an upcoming video as well as I also cover it in a very in-depth detail in the other 1-6 scale Tiger 1 vids that I've done that I've actually built the engine compartment already in. Another trait that was added was that of the sculpted weld bead detailing. Now there will be more weld beads that will be added specifically to this section here when the entire system gets dropped into the hull, but at this point here I took the opportunity to go ahead and add the weld beads. Also what is going to be added in a next upcoming video is that of the firewall axis hatch detailing which would be located in this section over here but again more information on that is to follow. 
Moving from the welds takes us to these two cutouts that I have here on the two end section of the compartment bay. On the tank, once it's fully installed, this is going to be where the fan clusters get mounted. Now, the reason for these cutouts it has to do with that of the idler mounts. Because the tank is radio controlled, the idler mounts are very, very important and is very good to have access to them. Now, because this tank is going to be getting a full engine bay interior compartment detailing, you're not going to be getting access to the idler mounts in case an emergency is to arise. That is the purpose of these two cutouts here. Now, once everything gets mounted into the tank, two little pieces of plastic are going to be silicone glued directly over this section here, which will seal it off, but will have a removable type aspect to it. So in case the need arises, you can rip off the panel and get access to the idler mount. Now, with the modifications that I made to the idler mount system, this is not going to be a necessary and also a frequent type routine for the maintenance. This is going to be only needed purely for doomsday type scenario in which the piece breaks off and you have no other option but to break in and get access to the component. However, like I said, this is a likelihood that should never happen. But it is good to cover your bases and have the contingency plan in case it does. In addition to fabricating the interior engine compartment walls and separations, another bit of detailing that's going to be added at this point here is that of the two lower hull fuel cells. Now, the Tiger One utilized four fuel cells in total, two of which are located over the spontans are located just underneath the engine grills. Those are the two most common ones that everyone knows of. The other two were located in the hull just on the opposite side of the wheels and these would have been on either side of the engine. As for the fuel tanks that you see here, the versions that I'm going to be using on this model are my own resting castings that are posted on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. The set comes with a left and right hand unit. As you can see the detailing does differ compared to the left and right hand side. Now, the units that you see here are currently primed and are ready for installation. Now, to modify the pieces to get them ready for installation did require some machining and some material removal along the back sides. As you can see, I've machined a little divot on this portion here of the fuel tanks. These recesses here are going to be that for clearance for that of the tension screw that is for the idler adjustment system. On the reverse side you'll notice there are some more sections that have been removed. The notch that you see up here is to make clearance for it. There's a fastener found on the ArmorTech hull and this clearance here is for that of the fastener. These holes are also for fastener clearance and this section here is for the clearance for the fasteners for that of the bump stops which are bolted to the tank. The opposite side features a similar setup with the removal of some material. Now some more material needs to have been milled away on this bottom portion here for make clearance with that of the suspension block arm that we have. Now all of these recesses here are not going to be noticed or seen at all as these are all going to be buried underneath the cubbies for that of the dividers for that of the fan compartment and so none of these protrusions or milled away areas are going to be noticed. Now the ECA sets are made from solid resin so the removal of these sections here is very easy compared to if the construction was made with a different format. The way these are going to be mounted onto the tank is with the same three fasteners that are located on the angle strip which was mentioned earlier, which those three securing fasteners are for that of the, of the cubby itself. Those three fasteners are going to serve double duty. They're going to hold on the engine compartment to the tank and are also going to hold on the fuel cells to the piece altogether. These three sections here are tapped. This is identical to the opposite side. And in addition to the fasteners, silicone will also be used to help adhere the fuel tanks to the side of the hull. The reason again for the silicone is for a, being used as a temporary measure. However, these pieces here should never need to be removed from the vehicle. With them now fully painted, it is now time for the installation. And here's the engine compartment, now ready for installation. As you can see since the last scenes, the entire unit has been painted with its coat of primer. 
with the primer now fully added, it can be mounted directly into the vehicle. Which will simply just slide right into place. Currently the divine walls are bolted to the model with only two points at this time, and that is on the two ends that we have here. To bolt on the remainder of the fasteners, I'm going to need to first, of course, get the fuel cells into place as the three fasteners that hold these together also mount this to the tank. Just before I go ahead and seat them in, I'm going to take some silicone and add it to a couple areas on the fuel cells. I'll now go ahead and slip them directly into place. Now currently I'm looking through the three fastener holes that are on the top in order to index everything in place. With the silicone on it does help keep the piece roughly in the area it needed to be up until the bolts fasten everything together. Now for the fasteners of course I'm going to be utilizing Loctite on all of the threads in order to prevent any sort of back out or loosening as the model is driven or and or when it ages. And here's the engine compartment now fully mounted to the model. As you can see with all the fasteners installed the piece is solidly mounted to the model and will never pop off. And of course the fuel tanks are also part of that installation. Moving from the fuel tanks takes us to the axis sections which were cut into the panel like I mentioned before. Here you can see the axis that you do have which is more than suffice at any type of issue which may arise. However like I said before this is not going to be something that is a regular thing or if ever. It's just a in case a situation ever arises you do have the ability to get access to these locations. Also like I said Previously, after the filming of the scene, the area here is going to be plated over with a removable access cap in case, again, the need ever arises. In addition to the access panels, the areas where the panels meet the hull will be modified with that of weld beads. These will be added shortly after the filming of this video. With the compartment now completed, I can now move on to that of the interior detailing. Here you can see the cooling fan and radiator clusters, they have been temporarily dropped into place in order to get an idea on how the rest of the engine compartment is going to fill out. Of course, once these features and details get mounted and added to the tank, these will be discussed in future upcoming videos. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1.6 scale, radio controlled, armor tech, German early production Tiger 1. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook where there are more photographs of this particular build that have been posted all the way from Project Start to the way you see it in this video. In addition to this, there are also many photographs of all the other builds that have been featured on the ECA channel. Finally, don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.